Uh, my wife says to me this morning, I don't want you telling any more of your weird stories. <laughs> that, that was going out the door. Don't tell any of your weird stories. And so just one little story. Uh, I'm not going to tell you this either. The other one I'm going to tell you later. Yeah. Uh, I thought we were going to end the interview right now. If you, if you can't do any of your, uh, what are we going to talk about? So, so the first thing is I want to thank you. So congratulations, Joe, on your Bitcoins. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number one. Number two, uh, I've been in this program for 17 years. Lori Ann just told me 17 years. So because of you, people recognize me everywhere. It's just amazing. You know, say thank you, talk, walk over to me all the time. I'm walking to work the other day down Park Avenue, and a woman comes running at me. I'm going north, south, and she's going north. She comes at me, and she grabs my horns, and she says, thank you, thank you. I love my smile. I said, well, I'm not your doctor. And she says, well, who are you? And I said, well, I'm, I'm Ron Barron. And she says, Ron Barron, you're that really cool guy on CNBC all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you must get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty amazing. Right. That, that's, uh, that's the weirdest it's story. It's all relative, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> all right. So what do you want to talk first? you want to talk the broader markets picture? Or do you want to talk Tesla and the run-up of it? Let's see. Well, so, so I just want to mention for a second about, I'll talk about that in just a minute. I know that's where you want to get to. But uh, yesterday or the day before, I was watching your show, and you talked about ESG and how uh, a lot of states are passing legislation or trying to pass legislation to say you shouldn't consider those factors. I should only consider how you can make the most money. And I would point out that we do consider those factors. We do consider good governance, how you treat employees. If you're not treating your employees well, uh, how are you going to retain them? Uh, how are you going to hire the best? And how are you going to uh, keep them? How are you going to train them? So basically, uh, we're interested in these things. And also, we're interested in making sure that the companies in which we're investing uh, haven't got these risks that I, we're not aware of. So we do, we are conscious of that. And to argue against the idea that it's not important about how much money you're able to, uh, only making the most money is what's important, uh, that we've been uh, conscious of this. And because of that, we've outperformed. So 98.8% of our stocks have done, of our funds have done better than the market. And 45.5% uh, are in the top 1%. Not only in the top 1%, uh, but number one in their categories. And Barron Partners Fund happens to be the number one performing mutual fund in the United States since 2003 when it became a mutual fund. So, so we have been able to perform well, taking let, into account these Let elements. me just say, though, ESG, I think it depends on who's using it and how they're measuring it. Obviously, you're not going to say you're against the environment. You're not against social or governance issues. Um, but... Sometimes people get in and measure things in crazy ways. And I, I think oh, a lot I of the pushback comes from the bureaucracy that comes from this and the greenwashing that this is used to dress up or dress down other places. And I think part of the problem comes from, you know, big institutional shareholders who have said you're going to do things this way. And it's not their money that they're even talking about. I agree. Well, cases. we're not like that. I yeah, I, I, I think it's it, I think this argument gets so convoluted because it really depends on what what you're talking about when you say ESG. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Anyway, so we are conscious of how companies act and how they treat people and how they treat shareholders. And so uh, so we're aware of all these things. Um, our business, uh, we keep expanding. Uh, we've never had a layoff in the history of our business. So therefore, uh, people feel comfortable working for us. They trust us. Uh, and we just keep growing. Uh, so we're now 197 people, 45 are analysts, portfolio managers. Uh, and uh, we do the best we can for our clients and we do the best we can for uh, our, our customers uh, and uh, our, our, our employees and shareholders. And so one of the things I think is really important is that uh, we don't worry about the stock market. We don't worry about interest rates, the economy, what the government's going to do, wars. Uh, uh, in my whole history, there's never been uh, a good news year, ex with one exception, when they took down the wall in uh, between East and West Germany. That's it. One good year for my whole career. And uh, yet, uh, the stock market in this whole period of time, uh, with terror attacks and inflation and wars and pandemics, uh, with all of that going on, the stock market is up 34 times since 1970 when I began my career. It was 1,000 then. It's now 34,000. And the economy, by the way, in that whole period of time, it's also up, uh, it's up 33 times. It's gone from $800 billion of, of GDP uh, to 26 and a quarter billion. So despite all this stuff, everyone talks about all day long and trying to figure out what's going to happen, uh, the market's up 33 times. And what I think is growth is now beginning to accelerate. And over the next 50 years, compared to the last 50 years, I think that you're going to have faster growth uh, than 7%. But uh, assuming that you get the same 7%, 
That means that you're going to have 35 times your money over the next 50 years, which means that the Dow Jones, which is now 34,000, will be 900,000. Uh, so, so when everyone talks about, well, is it going to be 32,000 or 33,000 or 30? I'm thinking about 900,000. Why do you think faster growth over the next 50 years? Because there's a lot of people who think, well, let's say over the next 10 years, you could see much slower growth than 7 percent. I mean, that's been the concern for a long time. Well, uh, inflation is 4 or 5 percent of that 7 percent growth. And real growth has been 2 percent. And all the growth that's really happened in the world has taken place in the past uh, 20, 30, 40 years. And, uh, and that's accelerating so because of technology. So you expect inflation, but you expect inflation to be higher, too? I expect inflation to be, as it always has been, as it has been in every single democracy that's ever existed, 4 or 5 percent a year. So I think everything is going to uh, you know, be twice as expensive in, uh, in, in 14 or 15 years than it is today. So it might touch down at 2 or 3 percent. Uh, but even Volcker, when he left in 1986 or 87, even then it was down to 3 percent from 18 or 19. We've gone from 9 or 9 and a half to four or four and a half or something like that. So maybe go a little bit lower, uh, but it's not going to stay lower. And it's, it's part of our, uh, of our